So we have quorum, and we've got two people on the phone. Um, so I will call the media order at 6.04 p.m. Um, second item is public comment, and that is not your turn to speak, but we have to do public comment. So. I mean, unless you have public comments not related to the steering committee. Um, all right, so um, go on to our action item, which is to, uh, first of all, thank you all for your interest in being on the steering committee. We really appreciate the interest. Um, and then we did want to provide an opportunity uh, for you all to speak um, uh, about your interests and just introduce yourself. I think we know most of you. Um, we have we have to leave for our regular meeting at 6.30, so that's 25 minutes and how many people do we have? Six. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you could all speak for about three or four <laughs> minutes, uh, I think that should give us, give us plenty of time to, to hear from everyone. Um, and if you could aim for two, just in case a couple other people filter in the room so we have some time on the back end, but um, my guess is that won't happen. So, uh, you know, somewhere between two and four minutes. And then you can line yourself in whatever, whatever order where you want to go in. But when you come up, you know, please, please introduce yourselves, uh, put a name to the face, um, and then just, uh, you know, elaborate on your, your interest for serving. We've all got your letters, uh, which were great. Um, so, Rebecca, do you want to go first? To the mic. Okay. To the mic. Mm -hmm. Mic Huh? Either one. Either that one. Or okay. Yeah, why do you send the desk? Because we have two people on the okay. phone. Oh, yeah. We have, just so you know, who's on the phone, so they're not mystery people. We have Lisa Frost and Ryan Sajak, uh, who are two Rockberry uh, board members. So I'm Rebecca Cobans. Um, I am a mother of three. Um, my first is in second grade. My second is our bonus. She just graduated from UV, uh, from here, and she's at UVM. Um, she's adopted. So she came to us when she was at the middle school, and so we um, shepherded her, shepherded her, shepherded her through high school here. And then my baby is um, at the Montpelier Children's House, which is a pre-K partner of Montpelier. Um, I feel like. Um, that gives me a really good, broad sense of, of the school system as it is now. Um, I, my second grader's on an IEP, so I, I have the perspective of um, special ed world. Um, and I have a specific passion about uh, pre-K and childcare and the benefits of, of having a publicly financed pre-K system. Um, I've lived in Montpelier most of my life, um, went to 32 and came back here after uh, sowing my seeds elsewhere. <laughs> um, so Montpelier is definitely my, my home for a long time. Any questions? Um, just want to verify the schedule works for you. Yes. And there we may, to accommodate teachers, we're likely to move back the 4 o'clock meetings on Monday to 4.30. That's fine. Okay. I right, just wanted to okay. verify. Um, and then my professional world is um, I work at I am the Director of External Affairs at Lamoille County Mental Health, um, and I work half-time, so that's why the schedule works for me. Great. Okay. Thanks, Rebecca. Thanks. Uh, anyone want to go next, or should I? Sure. Hi. Um, I'm Stacy Sheehan. I don't know any of you or <laughs> <laughs> many in the room, um, and so this is kind of my first time stepping forward for something like this. Um, I have 10-year-old twin girls at, in fourth grade at Union um, and um, have been in Montpelier for about a year and a half um, and in Vermont for about the last seven, almost eight. Um, my husband is an educator at Twinfield Union School and um, myself professionally, I'm the Human Resources Director at the Institute for Sustainable Communities, which I've been at since, I, since we moved to Montpelier. Um, I, I'm really interested in this because I don't have a lot of opportunity to use my HR skills and uh, the sort of recruiting rigor and um, experience that I have there I think would be really useful in this process. 
um, as well as um, the last several years working in HR nonprofits, um, working in HR in nonprofits, um, I've done a lot of work around the diversity and equity um, with, with that lens in, in my role. Um, so I feel like that's a very important component to this search and um, one that um, I think I bring a, a different perspective to. Um, and then, yeah, I think that hopefully uh, kind of that outside, more outside perspective from someone who's not engaged in this, um, I think I could bring something a little different. So the schedule great. works great. Schedule My works. role's flexible, um, so I can help out when needed. And any questions? Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Richard, do you look eager yeah, to go? Take it. In contrast, I know all of you. Yes. <laughs> uh, I would like to do this for an unusual reason. My name is Richard Shear, and I do not have a child in the school. Our child is in the Peace Corps in Ukraine. And I'd like to do this because I've done it before. And I think that that experience would be helpful to the committee. I was on the committee that hired Sue Boyd at Union Elementary, which was a very good hire. And I was on the committee that chose Pam Arnold uh, at Main Street Middle, and that was another good hire. And these committees are kind of, in a sense, like juries. And they come to the right conclusion in very unusual ways. And to have someone in there who's done this before helps on the process side of this. Now, I, I bring some things to the table, but I, I just, I'm coming in, the, in that direction. I also feel that the people who are chosen who don't have kids in the school have an important role for this committee, and that's how I'm coming in. And I think for the first time in my life, I beat my time limit. No. Yes. No. Thank you, Richard. Thanks, Richard. Thank and the schedule works? Yeah, the schedule works. Okay. Great. Nathan? Or Hi, I'm Marna Murray. I'm a resident of Montpelier. This time I've been a resident since 2010. Before that, I lived in Montpelier from the mid 80s till 99. Um, I was raised in Vermont, graduated from four educational institutions, BFA, St. Albans, Goddard, Johnson, Vermont Law School. Um, I do not have any children in public school now. I strongly support quality public school education. That really matters to me. My professional career was in continuing professional educations for state judiciaries. I did that in three states, and I returned to Vermont in 2010. I, uh, in the process of my professional career, reviewed hundreds of resumes, uh, applications, and things such as that, so I think I could bring those skills to this. Since I've returned, I've been eager to participate in civic opportunities, but because of my work and travel schedule, I'm not able to do that. So I see this as a limited commitment and experience, and I would make commitments to, to the dates as uh, outlined in your program. Um, because of my work experience, I have uh, deep respect for discretion, confidentiality, and independent judgment. So those are things that I think I would bring to the table as well. Do you have any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Marta. We don't know you. Yeah, no, we don't. I'm Ken Jones. I've been a resident of Montpelier for 20 years. For 17 years, I've had a kid in the school system, and those days are coming to a close. What is he over there? 32, 32 days, days till graduation. 32 days till graduation. <laughs> um, what I would like to bring to this uh, selection activity is a, a, the recognition of the, of the importance of the educational philosophy, but also the management piece. And when I say management piece, it's not just the, the management as a business, but managing the relations um, that are so important in schools. I mean, we have students, we have teachers, we have administrators, we have a school board. Um, and we have the community as a whole, uh, a community that may not have another connection with the school, may not have that student connection. And the superintendent is the kind of the keystone there. It has to represent all of those managed relations. And so as we um, 
look at the candidates, that, that's kind of the, the real angle that I'm going to really be looking towards. I know the educational philosophy piece will come out. That, that's a very important piece. Um, but I'd say what I want to do is, is bring that, that perspective about management. As others, I've hired a lot of people. I won't mention any specific names. Um, um, and, and I, but I also want to say, I want to thank you folks. One of the reasons why I think Montpelier is a great school system is do you think that other schools would have 15, school districts would have 15 people signing up to be on the superintendent <laughs> search committee? I mean, it's great. It's fantastic. So I, I'm sure you folks will, well, you'll have good folks, you, even if you don't pick me. You know, that'd be fine. So thanks. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks Ken. Ken. And I'm assuming the schedule works, right? Yeah. All right. Days and end of the letter Y. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Good evening, everyone. This is Nathan Souter. I live in Montpelier, parent of two children, spouse of one teacher at Union Elementary. As always, thank you for your service. Um, I know each of you and uh, enjoy spending time in here with you, especially during budget season. Uh, I'm interested in participating in this process because I've watched with great interest uh, the tenure of Dr. Ricca as superintendent and the course of the school district under his care and under the care of various iterations of the board. Uh, I'm strongly aware of the long-term impact of any hiring decision in the district, and the superintendent one is one of the deeper impacts. Uh, I have an appreciation for the profound implications of the vision and direction of any particular leader, especially a person at the top who works with their administrative team and acts as a visionary and uh, educational leader for the district. Um, and then. Um, I have a strong appreciation for what I think Montpelier Roxbury Public Schools can be for this commu these communities, for this state, and even leading regionally and nationally in other ways, and I think that's really important. Um, professionally, I work with uh, strategy, leadership, and internal culture in organizations and have a deep appreciation for team dynamics and the, and the impact that the, the person at the top position can have. Uh, and then last but not least, I am interested both in this process and in the second round, which I, I hope that the board will pursue a second search regardless of the person selected in this round starting sometime in October or December uh, of the coming school year because mm -hmm. I think we want to be able to pull from the strongest pool we possibly can. So throw my hat in that ring as well. Um, that's it. Thanks very much. Great. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, the schedule does work for me except for one detail that I added in my letter. On the 10th, I would participate by phone and then arrive halfway through. Okay. Is that it? Anyone else? I guess that's everyone. That's everyone. That's everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, I think... Uh, Motion to adjourn, unless people have any further comments, we can go talk about this more in Roxbury. Well, I just want to echo what Ken said, to thank all of you for your interest. Yeah. Um, we could staff several amazingly talented search committees out of the people who have expressed yeah. interest, and that's just a wonderful um, expression of uh, Montpelier's um, commitment to its public schools. So thank you for coming out tonight. Yeah. Nathan. Nathan. Can you now or leave in the future share who the uh, teachers are who, who offer themselves and do the yeah, I think we can do that, can't we? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, first of all, let me echo what Bridget said. Uh, thank you all for coming out. Uh, there was a strong showing <coughs> of interest. Um, so we have plenty to choose from, and we'll probably not be able to choose all of you. In fact, I know we won't be able to choose all of you because uh, uh, we're only going to choose three or four community members. So I can give you a little bit of breakdown of, of what we're planning, since we do have a few minutes. Uh, Mike DeWeese, who we are contracting with to do the search, uh, who's a former superintendent in Chittenden County, um, and is <coughs> on, you know, is now retired, but uh, does searches, superintendent searches on contract, uh, and now that he's retired, uh, has asked us originally to have 10 members. We bumped it up to 12. So we're going to have 12 total members on the steering committee to keep it a manageable size. Uh, from that, we want a mix of 
uh, community members, parents, uh, teachers, and other staff and faculty, uh, the leadership team in the district, uh, the board, and students. Uh, we're going to decide later how that likely breaks down, uh, but we'll probably have three to four community members, probably four. Uh, one, we would like to be from, well, we want to get Roxbury represented, so probably two of those total members on the committee will come from Roxbury. Uh, one is going to be a board member, Lisa Frost. Uh, so uh, just given the mix of what we have, it's probably likely that one of the community parent members will also come from Roxbury. Uh, and then uh, you know, we'll have a mix of teachers, leadership, um, and, and board from you know, beyond that. So we're probably looking at four community members out of 15 that applied. So uh, you know, three of, I think 14 from Montpelier will be selected. Uh, we are looking for a representative uh, committee, uh, one that, that really you know, understands diversity, equity, and inclusion, one that can bring, again, a variety of perspectives to the search uh, so that uh, we feel we have the best shot at getting a candidate who reflects the values and the various perspectives of the community. Uh, do you want the names of everyone who threw that in the ring? Okay. The community members, Richard Shear, uh, Nathan Souter, uh, Jay Erickson, uh, Sarika Tandon, Ken Jones, uh, Dan Desch, and by the way, several of these contacted me and said they, they had conflicts tonight. Uh, Rebecca Copans, uh, Keith Jones, uh, Marna Murray, Tiffany Miller, uh, Stacy Sheehan, Adam Sargent, Jill Briggs, uh, Denise Bailey, and Rhett Williams, who's a uh, Roxbury parent. Um, the teachers, uh, we have Laura Slesser, uh, Morgan Lloyd. So if you both end up, Nathan, end up committing, Nathan, you're going to have to. Does, does the schedule still work? Sylvia Fagan, uh, whose name I misspelled, and I will apologize to Sylvia for that. I just noticed that. Uh, and Julie Smart. Um, and then we also have. Uh, Peter Watt, uh, who's an instructional assistant, uh, and Russell Leet, uh, who's um, tech, uh, tech, support tech support district wide. Yeah. Uh, the leadership team, you know who the leadership team is. Um, they have ranked their preference. Uh, there will probably be two to three. Um, the preferred order they gave us was Mary Lundeen and Pam Arnold, so they will definitely be on. And a third might be Grant Geisler. Um, and that was, they met and, and gave that order of preference to us. Uh, we have two high school students, uh, both of whom come highly recommended from Mike McCraith and, and gave very compelling uh, letters. Uh, Jenna Crossman and Juno Nagel both are sophomores, so they'll have two more years in the district. Um, and then uh, Lisa Frost and Tina are going to be our board members, and Peter actually uh, emailed me earlier and said that um, he is too busy and it is okay not being on it. He didn't say it was too busy, but he said he said he said it was fine. Mm -hmm. um, and unless someone else jumps up from the board later, I think those will probably be the two board members. And then that committee will give three candidates, and then the board will select from those three. Jim, this is Dan Dash. Oh, hey, Dan. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> you can, the floor is yours. Oh, okay. Um, I uh, sent a letter to Jim about yep. uh, giving my. Um, Do you want to see yeah, if the table We have two board oh, yep. members on phones there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I sent the letter to Jim, and I don't know if you guys have seen it. Um, mm -hmm. I, yes. I know you guys are in a hurry to get out to Roxbury, so I don't want to repeat myself or really add anything to what I said in that letter. I'm happy to share it with you if you haven't seen it. Uh, but I thought I should come, and if you had any questions for me, I could answer them. Um, otherwise, I don't want to you know, waste everybody's time by repeating myself. I don't have anything to add, really. It's up to you. I mean, if you want to <laughs> give a summary, that's... Um, uh, just essentially that um, we have this challenge to 
merge the schools Roxbury and Montpelier. I'm very much in favor of that merger. I want to see it succeed. It's going to require a skilled administrator to to do that, um, make that happen smoothly, and along with achieving the various goals, some of them competing that that uh, merger entails. So, thought I might be able to help with that Great. selection process. Yeah, no, thank you. And um, no, your letter was, was great too. So. And as I was just explaining, we are going to make the choice later tonight. Uh, so um, we will know by the end of the meeting. And I'll email that out either uh, later tonight or probably tomorrow. Very good. Thank you. Thank yeah, you thank you all for coming. Um, yeah, no, the, the interest. Um, we wish we could have like 25 people on the search committee. Oh, but I know Mike I Louise does like not wish. Else. Huh. Um, do you, was the, so with the UES principal search, was there thought put into the actual hours that were, that there's like two full day um, days that they're doing, yeah. looking for the principal. And so that they're having a really hard time finding parents to serve on the committee because it's such a difficult schedule. Lift. Who, who, who chose that schedule or why? Uh, I don't know why. I know Pam Arnold has been in charge of the search. My guess is it was probably to accommodate internal schedules. And, uh, you know, frankly, we, do, we, have, we have time constraints with all of these hires. Sure. Um, you know, that is relatively the same schedule it was for the curriculum coordinator. Yeah. And that you see a lot of people in a day. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that even with the yeah. curriculum coordinator. It's, it's difficult for board members who work to take sure. the day off yeah. and arrange day child care. It's pretty typical though for these district hiring committees. Yeah. yeah, and I think with the superintendent just because it it is such an important position. Um, and it's also a position that the board is more directly involved with. We wanted to, you know, we chose the hours to make it more community accessible, but I think for the district hires, they tend to, it tends to fit more in the work day than the after work day. I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thanks again, everyone. We really appreciate it. And this is, this is very helpful for our, our decision making process.